Okay, here we are, another sale at Clark Auction. This time it's on Sunday, March the 10th, starting at 10 a.m. We have a super duper sale, or as we like to call it online, a monster march. Anyway, without further ado, let's start. We have this wonderful bedroom set, mid-century, by a designer called Edmund Spence. We have two end tables, headboard, this long chest and a high chest, wonderful condition, wonderful patina, great set, ready to go in the house. Mid-century wise, these are not mid-century, but they're nice copies of Barcelona chairs. Probably Italian, good quality, nice and heavy duty, nice to sit on. In the decorative items, look at this lamp. Cameo glass with the etched birds and the bamboo. Beautiful bronze base. I believe that's estimated six to nine hundred. Lots of regular 19th century French furniture. This bureau plat here, bronze mounted, one drawer. 19th century, not what they used to be, I'm afraid. We have a pair of these Regency style pedestals. Nice with the brass inlay. Marble inserts on the top. And somebody has a piece of sculpture here by Frederick Hart, one of many pieces of sculpture we have in the sale. We have a lot of 18th century, both continental and American furniture in the sale. Here's a nice example with the inward serpentine front 18th century, probably German, commode with all the original old locks. Even as an old box of money someone left in there for you. Over here we have this, this is a Jacobean, English 18th century chest in wonderful condition. Look how it sits up on those high bracket feet. Lots of rugs in the sale that Kenny will get to. We have lots of uh, alabaster, poor uh, alabaster statues in the sale. This is one of two that are in two pieces in a lot. Okay, in the main room, look nice and full, everything get ready. We're a week early this time, so it gives us time to prepare for our next sale. Okay, we have this snake skin or faux snake skin. We believe it's Carl Springer, sitting on top of a nice root table. Here we have this by, beautiful bronze sculptures by William Dickey. We believe this is of his wife when she was pregnant. It's got a monogram down here, so that's very nice. Here we have a, this sofa. Our settee is by Poltrona Froud, is a designer, I believe, called Luca Chacati or something like that, some Italian designer. We have two pieces of French Art Deco by Perguet. We have this little magazine holder. And over here we have this waste basket. Nice to have these. Nice and rare, look at this design on those. Okay, let's start over here with the smalls. We have a lot of mid-century uh, glazed porcelains or ceramics in the sale. This, these, this is a pair of doves that are by Professor Eugenio Patarino. This is also by him. So we have a few lots of with their initial EPF. This is a nice abstract sort of big cassowary looking figure. It's not by him, but there's the artist there. I believe it's Castagliani. We have more, so watch our site, C-L-A-R-K-E-N-Y dot com. We have hurricane sconces, lots of bronzes. Look at these guys down here. Good for the Paddy's Day to go around saying hello to everyone. Look, little nodders we have for the corkscrews. You can put them in the drinks and let them talk to the people, the drunker they get. Okay, we have up here a lot of heron. It's a nice little tea caddy. Sergio Bustamante back there, the owl. These are by more of the mid-century 50s stuff. These are by Gamboni. Haven't had a skull in a while, but I don't know who this fellow is, but we have a skull in the sale. Native American potteries. This is by Eugenio Paterino. Look at the size of this, it's great too. Once again, we have Arte bronzes. We have these two large ones, this one in the front and the one at the back. These are by Santi Moore, mid-century porcelains. At first we thought these were Lalique, and they're not. We do deal with Lalique, got in contact with us. These are Czech glass, they're beautiful, they're signed Lalique, but they are not. We have lots of Royal Worcester porcelain to sale, lots of art glass. These uh, candlesticks down here, beautiful gilding. These are actually signed Bar BDN. Look at the quality of the work in these. They're nice to have four, go across the whole table. So here we have more reticulated uh, Royal Worcester. Then we have old Paris porcelain. These are nice, a pair with sort of pats or pat on them. They're signed also, go to our site to see them. Down here we have a large Sevres urn in the back, no lid, a pair of Sevres urns there. These are very nice, sort of a Venetian feel to them, with good large size, look at that. Bronze mounted. Then we have a pair of these that go together with a shield. But these are nice, patinated metal. Here on the, we have religious icons. These came from up in Cold Spring. So it's the two icons there going together with these pair of, these two Santos figures. Moving all right along. This is a nice piece of KPM. Nice large piece, all signed on the back and titled. This is a Lalique, nice René Lalique. 
bowl here. This little box just came out of a house on time, but nice little porcelain set for carrying away for your picnics. Lots of clocks that Kenny will get to in the sale. I think he's going to get to that piece of trench art also. Okay, we're going to swing into some furniture now. Here we have a Paul Evans sculpted uh, bench. It was with the uh, vanity, but we put it separate because a lot of people just want the bench. I believe that's at two to three thousand. Below it, beautiful rosewood desk. Look at the patina on this desk. A nice rosewood. Here we have a, a bar. I believe it's... Oops. One of the guys locked it just to catch me. There we go. Look at that nice bar there. Nice style. Nice to have the key. Okay, top here we have... This is Paul Evans. Nice big size. This goes with the console, which I'm going to show you in a few minutes. Nice with the sculpted bronze. Over here we have the console. It's nice to have it on screen on the camera because you can get a good idea of the size so it has a nice thick slate top. Here we have Paul McCabe dresser. We have quite a bit of Paul McCabe in the sale. We're going to swing around here. Going up to more furniture. Here we have this, uh, this is by Maurice Valenci. Nice with the rosewood and the leather. Little damage on the leather. Here we have a set of eight Tone Bentwood chairs. Black lacquer, they were actually in the house at this table. I've forgotten the name of the table, so you look go clarkny.com, but it's a good designer. This table, atop the table, is an interesting lot. We have three complete sets of these Art Nouveau bronze sconces. Look at the size and the weight of them. These are the slag glass shades hang off them. That's one lot of three, but we have more coming up. Here we have a set of three wrought iron chairs. These are really nice with the ram's heads and the nice classical decoration on the back. Probably 19th century. I want to show you these chairs. I took them in only because they're in the same house, but I love the lines. Look at the little balls on the feet, very heavy. Great lines, them. I'm sure someone will know the designer on those. More Paul McCabe. This desk here, this came from Cold Spring, along with a lot of 18th century American furniture. Slant front, not overly desirable, but signed on the inner drawer. I believe it's maple. Here we have a Carl Springer style table here. Nice with the curls, curled bottom. And the top here, to complement that last lot, we have about eight of these are bronze. These are the bases. We don't have any more lamps, but we do have eight bases, a separate lot. These are sitting on top of a nice two, uh, two-seater Queen Anne mahogany settee. Once again, from all that 18th century stuff in Cold Spring. Nice elephant table here. The tusks are wood. Okay, on a walk-in Wednesday, a lot of 18th century continental, probably German broke furniture walk-in. This one is of particular interest. Look at the marble Pieta Dura plaques. Really wonderful. I'm not having a lot of luck with doors and keys today, so we won't bother. Nice of the pull-out. Pull-out seriously. Slant front, all original, little insert in there. Nice 18th century, doesn't look like it's been touched. Could do a little bit of work, obviously, but... Everyone would have been bananas for it in this day. We've got pairs of pedestals. Nice bow front mahogany 19th century uh, commode here. Here we have a German mirror, 18th century, with a nice classical German motif on the top. We've got a few of these Baroque commodes. Look at this with the nice overhang. What a wonderful grain on it with the walnut and the banding. The three drawer. Looks like it's ready to go into the house as you like it. Here we have another one, darker and patina. This one has inlay. Sitting on top of it, look, these came from Granny Show. I nearly pulled that out, not clever of me. These are Dresden, but look at the size. Plenty of mirrors on the side. We've got that bamboo one at the back. This from the 18th century continental again. Look at the inside of this. This is, once again, probably German. Needs a bit of work, but got the age and probably worth the time and the patience. Over here from Cold Spring, we have this 18th century American Chippendale commode. Nice with inward, inward serpentine front. Four drawer, nice bracket feet, nice drop or nice uh, overhang on the serpentine top. Look at this set here, Stickly Audi. Nice in the, uh, in the style of Harvey Ellis, arts and crafts. Moving down, lighting, we have plenty of lighting in the set. Look at the size of the chandelier. Could be Baccarat or it could be Waterford, but I veer towards Baccarat Marble. Nice big size, came out of Bedford, New York. This came out of Bedford also. That's just a small repair, it's no big deal, but wonderful Italian, probably 18th century with the alabaster base on it and the carved and gilt with rope. Beautiful top. Bird cage on stand. <coughs> Mid century swivel chairs, and a Gucci style table. This beautiful little antique kids' chair. 
We have bronze table lamps. This is a nice mid-century chair in Ottoman, nice oversized, probably nice and comfortable. Once again, needs a bit of work. Over here we have this um, Paul McCabe marble top. This goes together with another piece sitting on top of it. Look at all these girls playing poker here. I believe this by an artist called Bruno Luna. The chandelier here, Scolari. The reason I like it is because look at the, uh, the hole in the inside the hole there. Nice rare drops on this. Nice alabaster chandelier here. Here's two mid-century lamps. This one is by Joseph Colombo. Nice with the enamel red metal. This one here is by Castigliani. I believe it's called the Toya or the Joya lamp, Toya. Over here, more Paul Macabre. We're gonna switch up here. This here is by Silvio Viglia, Vigliaturo. Look at the size of this, the art glass. When you put the light behind it, it's absolutely magnificent. We have plenty of these trunks. We have about five of these trunks, Q80 we call them, brass overlaid trunks, mid-century chrome chairs. We have a nice pair of these. These are copies, but they're very well made, probably Italian, after Charles Ames lounge chair in Ottoman, a pair of them in brown. Here we have this Tiffany style lamp. Wonderful patina, wonderful quality, great leaded glass, wonderful colors when it's lit up, so you should look at that. I believe that's estimated 1015, another pair of mid-century chairs with a nice heavy chrome basis. This I say, I would say has sort of an Asian modern feel. Nice table with the rosewood and the mahogany, but nice with the little dovetailings around it. Could be a designer here. We have a rosewood settee. Moving right over here, we've got a nice pair of bronze planters down here. Good large size, getting that time of the year for your gardens as well. Here, one of two pairs of end irons. These are by Henri Vian. Two pairs, we have another pair up there, mid-century style tables. We have this Queen Anne 18th century <laughs> settee here, upholstered. Pairs of planters, antique mahogany, bow front sideboard, wonderful patina, nice size. This is quite a rare piece, this is Minton, sort of Majolica aesthetic movement, Minton porcelain uh, seat. These are the other Henri Vian and Irons dogs. Nice little Louis XV1 style parlor set, came from Long Island. Another sideboard, we've a parody of these, probably turn of the century. Look at this on top. Years ago, they would have been just crazy. This, this is one of the best examples you find. Black forest carved, look. The pheasants, the doves, the mirror. At the back of it, an 18th century Italian mirror, good big size. Came from Bedford, New York. Swinging right along, we have Georgian wing chairs. Look at this Baltic style bronze chandelier. Once again, great to be videoing so as you get the size, but the quality of this is wonderful. It's a great size. And below here, I would say this is probably Irish. Laughing because it's Paddy's Day come out, nice sitting on the big claw feet, nice serpentine here. This is, once again, getting near the summer again, so good for your plants, a plant or two to your tall metal. We got lacquer tables, mid-century chairs and ottomans. Over here we have, these are called ghost chairs, I believe we have a set of eight of them. Look, we have cellos. This here is a, this was a carousel frog. In a bit of shape, it's obviously been used, but I haven't seen one before, so. Hopefully someone's looking for that nice campaign desk. Look at the size of this leather top, all original. 19th century. This high boy here came from Cold Spring, the same spot as the American Chippendale chest. So it's a nice, nice high boy, nice patina. It's actually a good size. Seems to be in pretty good shape. Put your duds in it immediately. We got pair, two of these bronze, not a pair, but two good size, look, lots of rock crystal in them, wrought iron, this Art Deco one, look at the Griffins too, these are Frere, Muller, Muller Frere shades on it, moving right up, getting near the end, a large Q80 chest there, a Q80 trunk, over here we have vitrines, this uh, Chippendale style china cabinet, once again, also came out of Cold Spring, as you'll notice, lots of carpets, Kenny will get to this is a temple, all carved wood. Beautiful opens up. We have this nice, I'm gonna hold it up for you so as you can see it from over there. No, he's following me. Nice uh, pla, bureau pla. Okay, and I think we're getting to it there. We have American mirrors, period mirrors. Nice barrister's bookcase and give a quick glance back there. You get an idea of some of the things. We have that nice 
cabinet with the clock, lots of mirrors, lots and lots of stuff. Give you good reason to go to www.clarkeny.com. Previews are from noon to 6 p.m. Sale is on the 10th, starts at 10 a.m. Hope to see you all there. If you want to come early and preview, we're all set up and there's always a welcome on the door. Happy Paddy's Day coming up too. Thank you. Hi, and welcome to the March 10th auction preview of Asian Arts. We'll begin here with this beautiful Chinese uh, powder blue vase with gilt decoration or blue souffle. I'm going to show you the underside here so you can see that there's a double ring mark. Unfortunately, it has been drilled as a lamp. And then we have these cranes and circular frames. Really quite nice, nice age to it. Um, a really wonderful bronze. So this is probably 18th or 19th century. Um, really quite nice, great age. So you can see here the figures. It is in multiple pieces. I'm just gonna show you the underside quickly. And you're gonna see many pieces and many antiquities are from a Cold Spring, New York estate, including this bronze here. Chinese export silver. So really nice design here with a scalloped edge and the floral design. It is signed to the underside. Really quite nice at four to 600. Indian silver gem and enamel elephant with a huda with riders and the little man here. The elephant is holding a flower in its trunk and this is estimated three to 500, again from Cold Spring. Two gilt metal animals. So we have this recumbent stag and then a boy seated on a water buffalo reading a book on this carved wood fitted stand. These two are together at four to 600. We have a pair of Chinese cloisonne recumbent goats on stands, three to 500. Really wonderful from a Manhattan estate. We have this Japanese lacquered inro and netsuki. So it is on this cord and you can see a very clear signature to the underside and it's really quite nice and in very good condition. So a different scene to each side. So we have floral decoration, uh, really quite nice again at six to 900. A carved jade belt hook and a pale celadon or a white jade, and this is estimated at three to 500 in the form of a dragon. But what's really nice and a little bit unusual is this kind of scholar's item to the body of the piece. Collection of snuff bottles. So we have five snuff bottles, one reverse painted with tigers. Unfortunately, it is cracked. And then a landscape scene to the alternate side. Double gourd and iron red. Glass with this kind of multicolor splash carved stone and a carved agate vessel. Gilt silver, enamel, and jade brooch at three to 500. Um, this snuff bottle came from the same estate as our other snuff bottles. And I believe this may be Dwan stone. I'm not 100% sure. It is Chinese, sorry. That's just some powder that fell out of the snuff bottle itself. Um, good age to it. Um, really quite nice. And this is estimated at three to 500. So two pieces, um, this is Chinese, so a Chinese dessert terrine, and this is actually X Christie's, and this was Chinese enamel decorated Fami Rose made for the Indian market. So really quite nice, interesting, so you can see the sword wielding rider on an elephant. Really quite nice, here's the old Christie's labels, more to the interior, um, here is the underside, and then from the same estate, they're lotted individually, but there's also this plate, which is also Chinese export Fami Rose for the Indian market. And here we have a pair of also X Christie's Chinese Amari water sprinkler vases, or sprinkler vases as they're called, at three to 500. This is one of a grouping, so it includes two other vases, but this is just a nice Japanese iron teapot and it is signed to the underside of the lid that you can see right here. And that collection is estimated at three to 500. Two pieces here, very decorative, very pretty. Um, this is a, it's described on the original receipt as Mongolian. Um, could be Mongolian, looks Chinese to me, but what am I, who am I to say? Um, and it is together with this really beautiful multi-bird silk fan. There are some condition issues, but it's just the most beautiful example. It's in this plastic sleeve just to prevent any further losses. And those two items are together three to 500. And here's an interesting Indian painting. So it's this 
god or deity seated and then all these figures are holding this snake that's elongated really quite nice again this is from cold spring um, and he did have a very interesting collection is estimated at three to five hundred and we're just going to look briefly behind me so you can just see here we're just going to look briefly at all of the collection of tankas there's many embroideries in this sale um, and lots of porcelains that we haven't touched on a lot of tomb guardians chinese porcelains uh, we have some stoneware elephants we have some more cloisonne just an interesting collection of Asian arts for this sale. And then we're gonna move back to some porcelains here on our tables. Chinese Fami Vert um, and Fami Noir. Birds and Flowers vase. Six character marks to the underside within a blue ring. Really quite attractive, nice enamel work. One of my favorite lots in the sale, at least partially due to the fact of the color combination that I really quite love. So this is a blue, bulbous vase with iron red food dog decoration and it's really just quite nice here is the mark to the underside and I just really quite I really find it quite attractive um, Chinese silk embroidery it's over eight feet in length so you're not gonna be able to see the whole thing but there's some nice dragons to the edges ruby clouds flowers etc trying to find one of the dragons but it's not there here's one so here's the dragon and this kind of gold thread really quite nice Lots of pictures online, so check out our website. Two Japanese woodblock prints of Mount Fuji. All the details are online. We have these two, again, from Cold Spring, Antique Peacocks. So this is a Yazidi, I could be saying that incorrectly, um, Peacock Angel. So really quite nice, the tail is removable. So it is in two pieces. I'm just gonna put this back here. And then this is a Damascene Peacock. So really quite nice, funny face, but it's typical of the style. And these are both from Cold Spring together at four to 600. This is a Seljuk carved stone panel. Um, what's nice is that the individual who bought these items, he kept really great details of where he purchased them. This is ex Anavian Gallery and he paid about 8,000 for this piece. Um, so really quite interesting, lots of details online. This is a collection of antiquities, also from Cold Spring. Lots of information on where he purchased things and what they are. A write-in, this is a terracotta figure of Isis or Aphrodite, um, a nice terracotta vessel, a battle ax, two small masks, and then this carved stone head. And these are all grouped together at four to 600. Um, this, these are just two paintings in a grouping of Japanese artwork, again, from Cold Spring. And they're just really quite sweet. They're nicely framed. I really just think that the scene is fun. It's just really nice examples of Japanese art. So those are in a collection uh, along with four other Japanese woodblock prints. Pair of Chinese Fami Vert ceremonial yours. Unfortunately missing the top. There is a condition issue to this spout, but they're really quite nice. Here's the underside. They were glued to something. Maybe they were lamps at one point but these two are together. Here we have two glazed figures. So we have a Guan Yin and then a warrior. Um, and he comes with his own fitted stand, but the two are together at eight to 1200 from the Manhattan estate. Collection of six plates, all enamel decorated, really quite nice, nice age to them. And they came from a Brooklyn estate, the same as our little jade belt hook. Individual Chinese blue and white vase, um, goo form with flowers and scholars items. Here's the underside. This just came in last week, so a, a late addition to our March sale. Um, again, this came in on Walk and Wednesday. Again, a, a little bit of a later edition. So this is Chinese blue and white, symbols for happiness. Here's the underside, there's a four character mark. And the pair are 6,900. So the other one is in our cabinet, but it's a pair, or I should say a near pair, one is slightly taller. This again came in one of our Walk on Wednesday appraisal days. It is Grisail, it's Chinese, and it is this floral decoration against a yellow ground with this wonderful Greek key border. Um, really quite attractive. You can see the interior, it has been drilled. So there are these two little screws or nuts or whatever they're called. Um, but that is individually lotted. This is also from Cold Spring. It is a glazed terracotta roof tile, and it's this kind of merman or mythological creature. Really quite nice, there is a pair. Individually is this Chinese rose medallion or Fami rose urn or vase 
with gilt decoration at four to six hundred. Chinese blue and white, a large hexag or octagonal form. Yep, um, nice, a thousand and fifteen hundred. This is again from Cold Spring. So this is just this tiered ceremonial oil lamp um, and two of the stars of the show. So these are both from the same estate. Um, I took the lids off just so you can see how large they are in size and just the, the great quality of this piece. So this great carved catcher foil jade Chinese lid and this one goes on the top of this vessel. So wonderful uh, loose ring here, the Qi Long decoration etched throughout, really great size, great quality. This piece is estimated at six to 9,000. And from the same estate, we have this second carved jade, pale celadon jade vessel. So again, highly carved lid with this kind of branch decoration and then flowering branches throughout the body of the vessel. And this is estimated at 4,000 to 6,000. Both of them are from a White Plains estate um, and really just beautiful examples of carved Chinese jade. As far as this section of the gallery, we're gonna end here with this very large floor vase. It's Japanese, it's Amari, it's really quite nice for the dragons. And you can see it's quite tall, quite large, in relatively good condition. And I'm just going to jump back to these two robes. They're individually lotted. So this is Chinese silk embroidered floral robe. And this is at four to 600. And then from a separate estate, we have this Chinese embroidered robe as well with flower decoration. And then we're just gonna sneak back here. Individually lotted, we have two large lacquered floor screens. So this one is a Chinese lacquered screen with these shaped frames or fans against a red lacquered ground. This is estimated at five to 700. This is from a Greenwich estate. This is X Park Benet, really quite large, 18th century, 12 panel floor screen, really quite nice. The alternate side has an inscription, so each panel, instead of having a floral decoration or scholar's items, it's a panel of maybe a poem um, or some sort of inscription. There's lots of photos online, probably 50 photographs taken outside, so all of the details there's Park Bonnet receipts, there's gallery receipts, there's all of the information that the consigner had, which was vast. And this is estimated at four to 6,000, and I'm excited to see where this sells. It's really quite nice, great age, great condition. Um, and our sale is March 10th, and we hope to see you there. Hello everyone and welcome to the March 10th Clark Auction Gallery sale. The very first rug I'd like to share with you is right here. This finely hand knotted carpet showcases a beautiful open field complemented by a blue border. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this carpet right here is a spectacular Chinese hand knotted imperial caden carpet, showcasing a stunning depiction of a dragon and a phoenix symbolizing power, prosperity, and harmony, adding an exquisite touch of Eastern mystique to any space. Right here is something quite special, ladies and gentlemen. This Art Deco Chinese pictorial carpet features a captivating scene depicting a deer and a red-crowned crane. Here we have an antique hand-knotted carpet showcasing a stunning blue open field complemented by a delicate rose-colored border. Now this hand knotted carpet exemplifies the intricate Hari style with its traditional motifs and rich craftsmanship. This hand knotted Saruk style carpet showcases exquisite craftsmanship and intricate floral motifs throughout, reflecting timeless elegance and artistry. Before you, ladies and gentlemen, sits a stunning pile of oriental carpets. I'm eager to share their rich history and exquisite craftsmanship with you. I'm inviting each and every one of you to experience the beauty woven to each intricate design. Here we have a hand-knotted Hariz carpet. It exudes warmth and sophistication, adorned with traditional motifs and rich hues, adding timeless charm to any space. 
This oriental carpet, adorned with intricate images of majestic horses and tribal figures, offers a captivating glimpse into the cultural heritage and nomadic traditions of its origin. Here we have a vintage hand-knotted area carpet, ladies and gentlemen. It features a Carolina blue border and subtle highlights throughout, adding a touch of elegance and sophistication to any room decor. This beige and green Kerman carpet captivates with its lush green hues, symbolizing vitality and renewal, infusing any space with a refreshing and rejuvenating ambiance. The final carpet I'd like to share with you is this hand-knotted vintage blue carpet adorned with tassels and a large geometric shapes. It exudes timeless charm and character. Segwaying right over to horology, ladies and gentlemen, take a look at these clocks I have to offer. We have a carriage clock, we have a beautiful set Thomas clock with a spectacular loud bell, some lovely Jaeger Le Coutre Atmos clocks, Right next to it, Tiffany & Co. sign dial here, ladies and gentlemen. What a beautiful case clock. Moving right along to the bottom, we have a spectacular empire clock in a wood case. And then if we move right over here, beautiful French gilt clock here, ladies and gentlemen. Just take a look at this spectacular hound with them. That's a great looking dog there. Just below, we have a globe form clock, gilt, spectacular serpent hands. Just look at this, all the astrological symbols, ladies and gentlemen. This is a very intriguing clock indeed because of those symbols. Right next to it, Dutch repeater clock, ladies and gentlemen. What a spectacular clock. Ladies and gentlemen, before I move on to the last piece, I had to share with you this extraordinary cabinet executed in the Empire style. Just look at it, ladies and gentlemen. Columns, mirror, central clock, leaded glass doors. This is a piece you truly build a room around, and it could be yours here on March 10th at Clark Auction Gallery. And our very last clock is yet again another Jaeger Le Coutre Atmos clock. Box, cased, papers and all, ladies and gentlemen. Moving right along, I have a 1934 $1,000 FRN note, ladies and gentlemen, graded number 20. Right next to it, I have a 1913 $50 large size gold certificate. Spectacular note, ladies and gentlemen. Right up top, I have a 1924 50 pesos gold coin and an Austrian four ducat gold coin, ladies and gentlemen, restrike. Slightly above, you'll find a spectacular movement here, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a spouch with a Valju movement, that's right. Next to that, vintage stainless Rolex, ladies and gentlemen. And beside it, could that be a gilt dial explorer? It certainly is a very rare gilt dial Rolex Explorer vintage watch. What a spectacular piece of trench art, ladies and gentlemen. Just look at these inkwells. They are truly wonderful. Be sure to check out my description. Here I'd like to present to you a sign, Idomaki no Tachi Sword, a remarkable piece showcasing exquisite craftsmanship and historical significance. That's right, it's a sign blade. Be sure to go online and read my description and look at those photos. Beside that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm offering an authentic 1860 Civil War light cavalry sword, a remarkable piece of historical weaponry with a unique significance. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that about wraps it up for me. I'll see you all here on Sunday, March 10th, beginning at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Happy bidding. Hi there, welcome to Clark Auctions March 10th Fine Art Auction Preview. I'm gonna share with you some of our highlights. I'm gonna start with another favorite artist that we have here at Clark is Kenneth Callahan. Uh, he's a uh, North uh, West artist from Oregon. Uh, Steve should like that, who's doing the video. Uh, this is one of his equestrian uh, works on paper, and we've got two in this sale, and so we're really excited, and so hopefully those who like uh, horse paintings will have an opportunity to buy one of those. Down below is another artist that we have here at Clark Auctions, and we're really excited. These are the largest. We have two 
works this time by Vincent D. Smith, uh, the African-American artist, and this is estimated at three to 5,000. We're now gonna go on to a large uh, grouping of works that we have from a descendant of Edward J. Holslag. Uh, he's a Buffalo artist who, his paintbrush traveled across the country at the turn of the century. These are all about circa 1910. He's a muralist artist, and we have works by him uh, in the Southwest, uh, as well as we're now moving on to the second of Vincent D. Smith. This is titled A Vet with One Arm, and above that, we have another of the Kenneth Callahans. Uh, this is estimated at three to 5,000. Uh, and we're now gonna move over to going to the Middle East. And we have this fabulous full length portrait of a prince with a musket. Uh, it's a circle of the uh, circle of Muhammad Hassan. And that's estimated at two to 3,000. Now moving around, we move to a contemporary artist that we've had here at Clark before, which is Taro Yamamoto. There's a lot of interest in this fine looking splash of colors uh, in our sale, and that's estimated, I believe, at two to 3,000. Moving back in time, we go to the world of clipper ships. These are uh, done in the 19th century. And one specific one here in the middle is by a well-known artist named uh, Lai Fong of Calcutta. Uh, moving across, we've got some more clipper ships. Uh, this one is the, from the Chinese school. Moving over to the middle here, we have a fabulous Whistler print done in Venice. It's called the Venice Math, Math, uh, Mast, sorry. And it's got the butterfly tab uh, by Whistler, and it's really a fabulous print at three to 5,000. Now, one of the highlights that we have in the sale is this large uh, modernist uh, interpretation of a fruit bowl by the um, hip hop artist, uh, Fabulous Five Freddy. Um, and this was done in 1985, and it's really a wonderful opportunity to acquire a work by the MTV uh, Yo uh, Raps artist. Moving along the wall, we have some other works by uh, possibly Holslag. We have an Elliot Clark in the middle there and a Francois Gall. And we end up with another uh, Lai Fong of Calcutta work. And that's estimated at two to 3,000. All right, we're now in the main gallery and I'm gonna show you some interesting prints that we have, starting with this James Brooks a, a uh, impressionist uh, expressionist uh, done in the 70s and above that in the corner we have a female artist uh, Carol Summers and that's the Arab tent which is a wonderful uh, picture there print and next to that is a less known but really fabulous work by a guy named uh, Maltby Sykes and the interesting thing about this work was it was part of the Baltimore Museum's lending library we now move over to what I really am excited about is a work by Werner Mayer Gunter. He's a German artist who emigrated to Canada in the 40s due to his Jewish background. And his paintings that we have, three works, uh, all pertain to his um, moving from Germany to Canada. And so this is called The Family Walk. Now moving along, we have some more works by various artists. Uh, another um, Gunter, or Mayor Gunter print above. And then we have, that's a print, and that's a mere three to 500 for that work done in the 60s, very much like a Picasso. We move down to Penn Station by a contemporary Japanese artist uh, named Izuka. Um, who lives in New York City. Moving along the wall here, going high, we have this large work uh, by Clark Mur Murphy, um, which is a wonderful uh, constructionist work. And below that, we go to a Chilean artist named Enrique Castro Cid which you can have for an estimate of a mere four to 600. Moving along the wall, we have another Charles Fazzino, 
other abstracts. And we're stopping here at a portrait of the famous artist Robert Maplethorpe by an artist named Gerald uh, Malagna. And that's estimated at three to 500. We already have some interest in that photograph, so we have a bit of everything uh, here at Clark. We now move along to another artist that we have had a lot of, uh, named Simbari. This is of Notre Dame, and it's a la rather large work by the artist, so uh, a good opportunity to have a great big Nicholas Simbari. And then moving along the wall, we move on to an earlier landscape by uh, Henry Carl uh, Jackal. Uh, he's a German artist, and this looks like a Tyrolean uh, town by the lake. And we're now going to go to a more contemporary artist um, named Vladimir Lazarev. And this is a view in uh, Washington Square, uh, New York, at winter. And so hopefully we've passed that by and we're going to be in spring soon. But it's got some great painterly work there. We're now moving on to two, one of two uh, Edward Angelo Goodalls views in uh, the Middle East, possibly Morocco. We have two works by him and um, that came from the Forbes collection. Moving along we have more exciting still lifes and flowers, uh, English landscapes, a portrait from the Hong Kong School of Art, possibly a traitor. Uh, we have a Natier after pastel, possibly of uh, Madame Pompadour. And going into other earlier pictures, we have military play, playing cards, portraits. And then in the corner here, we have another portrait. Uh, but then in the corner here, we have a pair of works by James uh, Cronach. So we have a woman here with uh, some sheath of uh, wheat and uh, a dog, which are really wonderfully painted. And uh, we're really excited to have some traditional uh, paintings as well. We move on to American portraits and even George Washington. And as we pan along, some exciting opportunities, and be sure to look at our, our catalog. And now above, here are some exciting posters that we have of Tunisia and Casablanca. I now would like to show you a group of six prints that are in uh, our sale by Sam Francis, done in the 70s, titled Living in Our Own Light. A great opportunity to acquire a complete set, and it's estimated at two to three thousand. And as usual, this is just a sample of some of the items in our fine art section, so be sure to go to our catalog, ClarkNY.com, to get a complete listing uh, and details and photos, and good luck at the auction. Hi and welcome to the Jewelry and Silver Auction Preview video for our March 10th sale. We're going to begin here from a local Mameranek estate. We have this wonderful English silver easel back frame, really nice with the pudi and the high relief design to this piece, estimated at three to 500. This is an Italian 800 silver tea service from a Pelham estate. This right here, if you just want to do an overview of all of it, it's just a really interesting collection of tea strainers. But some really beautiful examples, we have Art Nouveau, Repousse. This is a particularly nice um, figural example with the grape cluster motif to the surround. Just really nice examples. And these are all together at five to 700. For our Judaica buyers, here we have a wonderful Hanukkah menorah oil lamp. So really quite nice example with the lions here. Um, again from Pelham, this is an 800 silver centerpiece bowl. Nice and ornate, nice weight to it. 12 bread plates, again Italian silver. This is Chinese export, but really beautiful example. If you can just see the craftsmanship here, the nice scalloped edge, slightly hand hammered finish. Just a really nice example and it is signed. Italian 800 silver serving tray, but really nice ornate handles, a beautiful border. A grouping of three pieces of American sterling hollowware. So we have Gorham, Esco, and this is Dominic and Half, and this came from a White Plains estate. 
Moving on to some groupings of Tiffany. Here we have a wonderful Tiffany & Company Autobahn serving piece at three to 500. A collection again from White Plains. We have two Tiffany Sterling bowls and a small heart form bowl. This came in in one of our walk in Wednesday appraisal days. So it's a wonderful, beautifully ornate Tiffany Taza. So it is sterling, monogrammed to the interior, but just look at the craftsmanship here, the paw feet. And this is accompanied by these cocktail or oyster forks. And this grouping is at five to 700. We have a grouping of continental silver, so we have a small pitcher and underplate, this bud vase, and a lidded terrine with spoon. Another collection of Tiffany, we have this leaf form bowl, a key ring, and then this is a golf ball holder. And you can just see the figural depiction here, and this grouping is all together. Austro-Hungarian silver and yellow box with an inlaid fox, I believe that is gold. Again, from our Walk-In Wednesday appraisal day, we have these this box set of H8 matchbox holders with various enamel decorated dogs. And this is just kind of cool. The consigner brought this in as well. And it's the box of the matches that went within here, the original box. Kind of neat, just a nice piece of history. Um, two pieces of hollowware. So we have this silver basket with the glass insert and then this porcelain gilt decorated bowl that has a silver rim and base. And here we have a flatware set. So it is in a box. And so there are, it's a service for 12 of various other pieces, which is quite nice. And now we're going to move on to some jewelry. So we have this grouping of a brooch and a pair of earrings. The brooch is bicolor gold with diamond accents and a pair of 14 karat yellow gold knot form earrings. A 14 karat gold hinged bracelet with diamond accents. There's a really nice buckle form designer or a jurettier, but it's hinged and quite nice. We have this nine karat gold mounted jade brooch, just a nice interesting piece. Uh, one of my favorite lots in the sale is this grouping of Victorian or antique jewelry. So we have these two English silver Victorian hinged bracelets, bar pin with smoky quartz. This is just wonderful inlaid, kind of Pietra Dura ring, nice and large, but it's really quite attractive. I'm just gonna put it on so you can see how nice it is. Really just a cool kind of boho look. Um, we have this Victorian chain with a locket, so it's monogrammed to one side, and the other is this uh, ivy form decor. Multi-strand 14 karat gold diamond and pearl bracelet. We have this grouping of 14 karat gold, so a 14 karat gold hinged bracelet, and this 14 karat gold and diamond floral form brooch. From one of our Walk-In Wednesday appraisal days, we have this Victorian graduated coral seed bead ball form beaded necklace with enamel decoration to the caps. Really quite nice, probably Qing Dynasty. Um, and then we have this Victorian slide necklace with tassel drops from a Greenwich estate at eight to 1200. This came in on Walk-In Wednesday and it's just cute as can be. So it's all of these tablewares. Many pieces are by Lessie, but look at this. I, I didn't inventory it, so I have to say I don't know what all of the pieces are. But we have egg holders, we have little figural things. Everything is defined in our description as to what it is and what company made it. But they're just so cute, and I really just quite like it. It's at four to six hundred for this grouping. So check it out online. Images of everything. Moving back to some jewelry, we have this wonderful continental gold and seed pearl chain with this beautiful circular pendant with a diamond accent and seed pearls. We have a jewelry collection here from a Long Island estate. So there's a Bulgari silver ring with enamel decoration, a pair of blue enamel cufflinks, and this retro or vintage 14 karat gold stick pin with diamonds and colored gems. This is from our Cold Spring estate and he did collect a lot of antiquities. So there's a pair of carnelian inscribed cufflinks, a intaglio ring, and then this silver mounted coin. So all really quite nice, mainly men's jewelry, but a lady could wear it also. We have a pair of platinum and diamond glasses. So they are the kind that pinch on your nose, so there's no um, holders for your ears, but they're really quite nice at four to 600. Antique jewelry came from the same estate as our enamel dog matchbox holders. Beautiful colored gem, bicolor gold, and diamond bracelet. This is quite sweet. So this is a collection of jewelry. So it's not necessarily what it is, but these are gems. So there's two amethysts and a citrine, or a topaz, I'm sorry. But they come with the original receipt from Marcus & Co., which I th just think is so cool. It's July 8th, 1965. 
So there's an amethyst oval, approximately 19 carats, $175. A citrine quartz, that is 27.35 carats for $40, and another amethyst that costs $220. There's also a pearl necklace and a pair of pearl earrings. But what is so sweet is that it was purchased at Lambert Brothers, but it's described as cute pearls. So what was in the box was a pearl necklace and pearl earrings. I'm not sure which is cuter, but one of them came from Lambert Brothers. And I just think that's a sweet lot, estimated at three to 500. This came from a Pelham Estate, so it's a silver overlaid porcelain with these silver demi tasse spoons, just a really nice box set. So just a little sweet grouping here, and that's at three to 500. Moving on to some more jewelry, we have this 14 karat gold articulated fish. It's accompanied by several other pieces of jewelry. The chain is just gold tone. Moving forward, this is a lovely pair of earrings. There's watermelon tourmaline, opal, and probably pink tourmaline. And this came from the estate of Audrey Flashner. Moving forward, we have this 14 karat gold diamond and colored gem bracelet in the style of Marco Bisego. A very sweet gold and enamel ring. A great link here. So this is 14 karat gold, but it's really just the design of the link that makes it so fantastic. Pair of Mughal style earrings, mother of pearl, gem, etc. Really sweet statement earrings. Great for the summer months coming sooner rather than later, hopefully. Pair of 14 karat gold earrings with colored gems and pearls in the style of Elizabeth Locke. From one of our Walk-In Wednesday appraisal days, an 18 karat gold bamboo form brooch with turquoise beads. Grouping of jewelry. 14 karat gold, 14 karat gold, 14 karat gold, all great brooches, or this is also a pendant. Wonderful charm bracelet, really quite sweet. Grouping of jewelry. So we have this Victorian, I believe it's a brooch. Yep, brooch. A gold chain and a gold, probably fraternal pin. 14 karat gold amethyst hinged bracelet, really quite nice. A pair of David Webb 18 karat gold and white enamel cufflinks. We have a grouping of rings, red coral and pearl, probably jade and pearl, and a diamond and pearl ring. Platinum diamond and pearl pendant or brooch, two 14 karat gold rings, one is jade. This is a wonderful 14 karat yellow gold hinged box with a probably um, Grand Tour little tessellated scene here. So really quite nice, and this is at eight to 1200. We have a 14 karat gold charm bracelet with two oversized charms. 14 karat gold ring, so sweet with a little diamond. A platinum and diamond engagement ring, a 18 karat gold over 14 karat gold diamond engagement ring. A platinum engagement ring. We're going to skip to this diamond. So it's a wonderful engaged, well, actually it was an engagement ring at one point, but I think that it was repurposed to a just stylish statement ring. Um, and we did obtain a GIA for the center stone. It is 1.87 carats D color, which is excellent, and a clarity grading of I1. This is estimated at four to 6,000. Jumping forward from the estate of Audrey Flashner, we have these two snake brooches. Really so sweet, this enamel example, but snakes are in, both are quite sweet. We have a late arrival of these two wonderful emerald brooches, each in, lotted individually. This is emerald and diamonds at two to 3,000. And then this is signed by a maker, AK, not sure who it is, but it's of the utmost quality. It's 18 karat gold with diamonds and emeralds. Emeralds are a nice vibrant green and diamonds are white and clean. We have this 14 karat gold and rose cut diamond ring, really quite sweet at four to 600. And then last but not least, we have this really beautiful emerald cut diamond engagement ring and we did obtain the GIA ourselves. It is 2.77 carats, J color and VS1 clarity. The estimate is five to 7,000. It is set in platinum. And that wraps it up. There's lots more to see. So we hope you join us on March 10th.